Hi, my name is Ken Hackworth, and we are here to demonstrate the Machine Safety Pro app, brought to you by Machine Safety Specialists. In this video, we're teaching you how to use the app to make great looking machine safety reports. This video does not teach you about the machine safety standards that apply in the United States. To learn about those, we encourage you to check out our one or two day machine safety training classes. You can find more information on these training classes by visiting our website. In this video, we're demonstrating how to use the app. You will see that Machine Safety Pro provides a very efficient, repeatable, and automated process that guides you in completing machine safety audits and risk assessments on machines installed in the United States. The first thing you will want to do is log into the app. And after you're logged in, you go in and choose the L2WR audit, which is our most popular audit, it provides a compliance audit and overall risk assessment for the machine. All right, uh, this audit is basically divided into three sections. The first one is you're gathering information on the machine and the auditor. The second stage is you're gathering information on the machine hazards and any existing machine risk reduction measures that are in place, guards and so on. And the third is you're going to make recommendations on what to do to improve the machine. Now, this is all based on OSHA, ANSI, RIA, NFPA, and other U.S. standards. So we'll dig in the audit here, and we'll type in the machine name. So I can go over and look in the machine. I see here we are looking at an orbital riveter. And machine ID. And your company name. Just put your company name in there. And of course, you know, as with all modern tools, we want to have traceability and who conducted the audit and uh, accountability. And so it's got these basic measures in it for revision control and so on. The blue text here allows you to type an internal message. You may be typing this to a coworker or someone else. It will not show up in the report. And this allows you a way to write a message to a coworker and so on that they can get back to you without the contents necessarily showing up in the report. All right, you can reference a variety of different OSHA and ANSI standards in here. The most common ones for all machines are found at the top. So you just select those standards. That ends the section on establishing the framework and basis for our report where we've identified the machine and the auditor. Now we're going to go in and make observations of the safety features and hazards on the machine. So to do that, we will take a photo. Now, if I were in the field, I'd have it right in front of me. I'd just go into photo mode and take a bunch of photos of the machine. Uh, actually, we're looking at all angles of the machine and all the hazards and existing risk reduction measures on the machine. Go into the photo library and select. We see we go into the machine. We got a riveter here. Clearly, there's a point of operation that's unguarded, and this is with our test hand digit that we use for testing the severity of injury, and you can find that at our web store. We will identify the point of operation hazard that's unguarded, clearly right there, and then we'll make a note saying riveter is unguarded, add guard to prevent ANSI scale reach per ANSI. 11.19. So we'll select that and we have our note in there. If we want, we can review that note and just check what we have typed is what we want. Now we go on and we go through a machine safeguarding checklist. This is handy for, for those of you who are experienced doing machine safety checks. You'll find that this is real straightforward and it's consistent with all U.S. safety standards for machinery. For those of you who are not as experienced, this is very helpful in guiding you through the process of knowing what to look for. So you may flip back and forth between the photos in this checklist, ensuring that you have everything noted. Now in this demo, I just did one photo, but a typical machine inspection may have any place from 10 to 80 photographs, depending on the complexity of the machine. So we just go through here and the first question, as tested with a safety scale, does the point of operation safeguard prevent access by the operator's body, hands, and fingers to all hazards? And clearly, since this point of operation is unguarded, the answer is no. Are all safeguards in place with secure fasteners? Well, the ones that are in place on the gearbox and back and so on, those are secured, so we may say yes. 
And we go down through the questions, and these are based on OSHA and ANSI standards. The subject of control reliability is critical when it comes to safety in the United States. So we start asking questions about the category and performance level, functional safety rating of the devices and the circuitry. So you fill out this checklist. We mentioned non-mechanical hazards here, such as hearing protection and hot surfaces. We talk briefly on grounding, and then we answer a few questions about lockout, tagout. And that is the compliance audit. Going further, it prompts the auditor to look for the existing hazards. Well, clearly, there's a point of operation hazard here. So um, it's down to mechanical hazards. By the way, this is populated with a standard list found in ANSI B11.0. Going on down through here, observe risk reduction methods. Now, most machines, even though they may not be perfectly guarded, at least there's something in place. So here, there may be partial guards. There might be an emergency stop device. Let's just look for that. Yeah, emergency stop device. There might be a light curtain and so on. And you just spec out what you see. Again, for lesser experienced people, having these drop down lists helps you know what to look for. Also for more experienced people, it helps save a lot of typing, making this very fast and efficient, and it helps make the reports a lot more consistent. Additional observation, we may notice there's a hole in the floor near the machine that may not be on the ANSI standard list, so uh, there's a place to type in free text. Affected persons, so here we're trying to determine if persons affected are operators or maintenance. That's really getting at is if it's a normal operation or if it's a maintenance activity. We check those boxes. Then we move on to the risk assessment. Now this is a risk rating for the overall machine. That means you choose the risk with the highest severity and choose the most probable outcome of having exposure to the highest severity hazard on the machine. So when you look at this riveter, clearly it's the point of operation. And what's the most likely outcome if you were to rivet your finger? That may be a bit debatable between an S2 or an S3. An S2 is a reversible injury and S3 is non-reversible, including a amputation through fatality. So I'm gonna say the most likely outcome is an S2 without any safeguarding. With the existing safeguarding, and there's basically none, still same thing, S2. We move on to the exposure. Most machines either have low or high exposure, depending on how often they do it. Here, of course, the operator every few seconds puts in a new part and presses a button, so there's very high levels of exposure, both with and without safeguarding. And then we look at the probability of avoidance, and that's how fast does it move. This one happens to move very quickly, much faster than 250 millimeters per second. So avoidance is not likely once you press the trigger, both with and without safeguarding. If we had a two-hand controls on that, we might be able to change that to likely. But we go down through here and just confirm our selections. And this app tells us in advance. Now, this is not the report. The report comes out in Microsoft Word later. It's emailed to you. We see that this is a considered a high-risk machine. So now we shift gears over into looking at the recommendations on the machine. What are we going to recommend? Well, are we going to add any technology? If we are, we want the control circuit to be yes. If we're just bolting a guard on or something, then and we don't need a control circuit, then no sense looking up all the categories and performance levels. Again, if we're gonna add a light curtain, and I think we are in this one, we're gonna select yes. This tells us that all of our devices and the circuitry must be at least category three performance level D. That's also called control reliable by the ANSI and OSHA standards. So that's real important, and this app does the lookup table for that. Now in the recommendation section, what are we going to recommend? Looking at the hierarchy of controls, we're going to recommend safeguarding and administrative controls, actions and methods, uh, add some guarding or secure the mat floor. If it's not in our most common safeguarding list, then we go down here to risk reduction measures and we have light curtain, add a light curtain. Also a programmable electronic system. We want to spec that out. That would be a safety controller. We want good procedures, right? And if you aren't sure what to type, you can scroll down this list. Again, this is an ANSI standard list of risk reduction measures. We leave this generic per the ANSI standards. However, it could be populated with specific devices if you want those. And corrective actions and comments, where it's saying add light curtains and control reliable stopping functions per ANSI 11.19. We also say repair hole in 
floor near machine. You just want to show that you capture all kinds of hazards in here, even if they're not machine related hazards. All right, so you've got your machine documented, you've got your hazards and existing risk reduction methods included. You've also got your recommendations in here for risk reduction. And when that is complete, you hit agree and submit. You can submit this to your other coworkers, or you can just submit it to your account when you're done. And you hit submit, it syncs up with the cloud, saves this in a secure account, and it is also emailed to you in a Microsoft Word document. And you've got a great looking report. All right, that about wraps it up for a brief demo of the Machine Safety Pro app. Thank you very much and have a great day.